Good morning, everybody. I am Muddy the Mud Skipper. <laughs> I am the Mud Skipper here at the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. Saying good morning. <laughs> good morning. I have segmented eyes. <laughs> Hi. That's the best view you'll ever have of my mouth. Yes, this is the, the most close-up view you'll ever see of a mud skipper. <laughs> wow, he's he's like a star. He knows he's on camera. <laughs> Hi there. Whoa! <laughs> what you doing? He's like, where's the food? So, I am Ian Trevethan, and this is Dr. Reese Barrick. He is our museum director here at the Sternberg. And we are talking about mud skippers. I have spent many, 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 many an hour staring at these guys. Fascinating animals. And we've got a couple different, I think we have two different kinds of mud skippers in here. Yeah, there's a smaller one up here. Let's see if I can... Don't know if this will let me zoom in on him or not. There he is. Or she. It. Excuse my unsteady camera work here. So why do we have mud skippers, Reese? What is what is so unique about these animals that we as a natural history museum that generally people don't think of live animals um, you know on display, why do we have these here? Well, Ian, we're sitting here, as you know, in an area of the museum called Bringing Fossils to Life. Mm. And in this area, we like to talk about things or evolutionary processes that we see in, in fossils, and we like to talk about in fossils, and we like to bring our discussion to things that are alive today, because we know evolution didn't stop 300 million years ago, but it continues on to this day. So what's cool about mudskippers? What is weird? What are mud skippers? Well, they're fish. They're That's fish. Cool. They're fish. But what's that little one over there doing? Is he in the water? Alicia says that it's a she. <laughs> 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 I assume this is the one you're talking about, Alicia. Yes. So you'll notice that most fish like to hang out in the water, underneath sub sub level in the water. <laughs> Why do, they, why, do they, why do most fish like to do that? Well, because they have gills, and that's where they can breathe. And they don't really have much of a way to pull themselves up on land. So what's this little gal doing? She's up on land. <laughs> How's she breathing? It's amazing. So, um, mud skippers have to do this funny thing where they take like a, a big water bubble and hold it in their mouth so, that, so they can get some oxygen from that water bubble into their gills even when they get out and run around on the land. Oh, and she just did something. She just blinked her eye. <laughs> so so they can carry her out and be on land long enough that they can keep getting the oxygen out of the water bubble that they're carrying around in their mouth. Then they have to go back in the water again. But it gives them some time to hang out at least partially on land, which is a lot more access than other fish generally have in order to stay alive. Now I have heard, and I don't know if this is correct because I am by no means an expert in certainly not modern fish, and certainly not this kind of modern fish, but I've heard that they also have um, water kind of stored up in their eyes. So when they sort of squish their eyes, the water runs over their gills. Is that correct or is that something that is unknown to us as vertebrate paleontologists? Alicia? Alicia? <laughs> so our, our male went hiding so I guess I was gonna he just had his head sticking out and I was gonna try to get a, a shot of his eyeballs. But the well the interesting thing about their eyes talking about eyes. Oops. I'm trying not to drop this in the water that would be bad. That would be bad. Um, they have these big eyes sticking on the top of their heads and they can't Oops. squish them down. But the other interesting thing about them is I think believe that they, they can see 
their eyes on the top of their head. Aha! Uh -huh. Alicia says, it's true. I was <laughs> not making things up. Yay. Thank you, Alicia. I'm glad you're here. They can also see with when they're even swimming, they can have the, you know, when we go in the water, <clears throat> our vision is very different than when it is up in the air. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> the mudskippers can actually have their eyes sort of divided in two, top and bottom, where they can actually see in the air and see underwater equally well, which is kind of a funny, weird thing. Now she's very wary of us. She's like, what are you looking at? So they, they are able to see in air or underwater pretty well. And that's a pretty cool adaptation that not all of us have very... Yeah, I am not very well adapted for water. Um, <laughs> I don't know that I'm well adapted for land either. <laughs> well, there's the male came back out there. Yeah, he's, he's, over, he's over there, but he's not sticking his head out of the water. It's kind of hard to see him because he's, he's sort of blended into that, oh, yeah. that color there. He's into the background. Yep. So that's a cool adaptation for seeing Oh, you look. want to be on land or in the water. Oh, look who's it's here. Alicia. We're making this painful for me. I was trying to feed mice and watch at the same time. That that good, huh? That good. I'm just... <laughs> yes, Kimberly, it's a mud skipper. It is a mud skipper. Well, you know, Alicia's not a mud skipper. Alicia's a person. <laughs> That's debatable. Well, have you ever seen her skipping in the mud? No. Sometimes? No, I, I have not it's had the fun. pleasure. She does with her toe getting in the mud. She oh, skips around. Have you around. seen me play around in here? Uh, I have. I, I, well, I, everybody plays in here, I think. Well, that's true. Like, it's a, it's a good uh, stress reliever when you're having a rough day. It is. You just come down here and watch it's these really guys fish. do what they do, these girls, as mm -hmm. the case may be. That's a dude. How, many, a, how many do we have? Three. Three. So there's one that's There's a large female somewhere. that's hidden. But I did just feed them like 20 minutes ago. Oh. So she's probably got her fat, happy belly hiding somewhere. Do these guys have names at all, or? Well, we had some Fort Hayes students here once. Once? And, well, <laughs> one time we had students doing here. Doing a, a observation of them. So they did name the big ones. So that one's Alpha because he's a big old bully. Alpha, huh? And the other one's name is Blinky because she blinks a lot. The one over there? Not that one. That one doesn't one have a name. Hiding. The one that's in hiding. That one is just. So Alpha's a bully. Yes, Alpha is a bully. If Alpha was to go onto land, he would try to eat the small one. But I already fed them, so they're happy. Okay. And I assume you scared away all the fish. Oh, yes. so the fish are hiding from him? No, they're hiding from you. Why? I mean, have you looked at us lately? I only saw one archer fish, and yes, it took off and went behind there the rocks. Are I showered still today, six. I put on all my clothes, I'm not missing pants or anything. I'm gonna, like, not leave that there. Yeah. Uh, you see, there's one archer fish right back there, just hiding. Where? You don't see the little archer fish? I don't. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, there he is. Oh, let's see if I can... You see right up against the board, there it is. Just squished up against the side there. Hopefully nobody will see him and eat him. <laughs> Apparently, it's afraid that we will eat him. Hello, buddy. So what do archer fish do? Why do we call them archer fish? Well, they like to spit. So if you look at this glass, just mm -hmm. since we haven't been open you'll notice that it is just oh yeah it's all very of, very dirty so that's fish spittle that's fish spittle <laughs> so archer fish like to eat prey that's outside of the water mm -hmm. so they'll eat insects so if there was a cricket crawling on this branch they spit water at it knock it down and then eat it well he thinks you're gonna give him food i, I already fed him mm -hmm. so here's a question though the, where do most don't where do most fish get their food where do fish, most fish get their food? Well, I would assume in the water. In the water, mm -hmm. right? So, how does a fish in, figure out how to eat something that's not in the water? They're just that awesome. They're like, oh, look at all these other fish. We don't have very much food. Look, there's a cricket up there. I think I'm going to try to get that. So competition drives innovation. Yeah. They can also jump really high. And it's creepy. I love when they do it at visitors. Visitors always try to yeah, so it, hold now shiny it's like, objects. Oh, like you looking at me. Totally went behind the rock. Yeah. Well, there's six of them in here. How are they all hiding where we can't see them? It's amazing. Well, I've gotten one to like me and eat from my tongs, uh -huh. but that's it. And then there's this one that likes to eat from the tongs. 
but people are always trying to get them to spit at them. And half the time they'll be like, nah, I can just Excuse jump me. out of the water. Pardon me. Hello. Look at that arm or that fin or whatever you want to call it. It's beautiful. Why not both? Arm fin, thin arm. Hi. Look at that, the, the limb there. The limb. That is, the limb. A, that, is, that is a fin that's got some larger bones here and some serious muscle. Now, on, you look there, they just have typical fish ray fins or just little teeny little bones in the fin down that's on the ground. But they have much more robust, stronger bones up in the arm. And I love this. Is this, what would you call that, a threat display or a... It's the makings of one. It's like, you know, hey, I'm... When he is really upset or trying to get food off of land, it goes straight up and he turns really, really blue. So... See what he's doing? That's called... What do we call that? Crutching. Crutching, yes. Because he doesn't... You can see he has no rear... He knows he's a star. He has Look no out. rear limbs, so he has to pull himself um, strictly with his arms. You know what this reminds me of? So we have this cat that likes to escape, and he's a big pain. Um, and we don't want him to escape because, well, he's an inside cat, and he'll get his butt kicked by some wild animal or something. So we got a harness for him. And when we put the harness on, he walks exactly like this mud skipper. <laughs> he acts like he's been, like... <laughs> Cut off his legs. Yeah, so he crutches when oh, he walks in the goodness. harness. We thought it would be a nice way for him to just, you know, hang out outside, but nope. he acts like he's been severed. Oh, so sad. <laughs> That's what he looks like, a mud skipper, oh, furry mud skipper. Oh, there we, there we go. Hello. Somebody want to stick their finger in there and see if he bites it? No. Darn. I nominate you. Nope, bim bit. Don't want to do it again. So this is your, your Zen morning live feed looking at our oh, mud skippers awesome. and you can see why they're just fascinating animals you can spend many 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 hours you know with the sound of the water and them swimming around when they decide to come out and play yeah well and another th interesting thing is they don't have any rear limbs they can't really get around for very long on land they can crutch with their front arms and go pretty quickly when they get on land for very short periods of time. But they can't just walk around for a long time on land because it's it's uh, pretty tough to go with only front arms and no back legs. Especially when you're used to the lightness of water. So Ooh. in the water, it's a lot easier to run with just front Gosh, limbs. Know, I never thought of that. Now that's a crazy thing, transitioning from the water where you're fairly weightless Mm -hmm. To the land, I never thought about that. That's crazy. So, mud skippers, in a sense, are spending time on land. It's like they're trying to transition from water to land, but they don't really have. Oh, there's a sail. <laughs> all of the best adaptations that animals did, the first fish that transitioned to land really had. That is, these guys have no hind legs, and they don't have an. A, a, a swim bladder, so they don't have anything that can convert into a lung. So they're stuck either blinking their eyes, like Elisa, Alicia told us, or holding an air bubble or a water bubble in their mouth. Yeah, you can see the bubbles coming yeah. out every once in a while. It's kind of cool. Um, so they can't really stay on land very long as far as breathing or even for walking without the, the benefit of some water. Do you think he sees his own reflection and tries to impress himself? It's very possible. He's probably like, no, well, I was just the noticing, in you know, here he, was, are mine. he was putting up his sail as he was coming close to the the wall part here. Well, he can definitely see himself in the back one. Yes. Oh, where'd he him. go? He went away totally. <laughs> where am I going? <laughs> see, he can see himself now, that's for sure. Yep. Because that's like... No, that. That's kind of cool, watching him swim with himself. <laughs> <laughs> Could you be competition for yourself? Friend friend. <laughs> friend of me? See, he doesn't really have any competition because he's the only male in here, except for for food. And the little one's smart, okay? The little one's always on land, <laughs> ready for food. Mm -hmm. So she's in the water right now, but it's just a little, little bit of water. So whenever I throw her food, she is the first one getting it. Whereas he will swim up to me and like, put it right in my mouth, put it right in my hey, mouth. Hey, look at me. I don't want to chase it. So I think this he's probably more of a narcissist. He likes staring at himself because yes. he's so good looking as opposed well, to... he knew that a camera was on him right away. 
He's not worried about that being actually. He he recognizes that as himself mm -hmm. instead like, of you mm -hmm. know. I'm fabulous. You know, a potential competitor. He's just mm -hmm. like, no, that's me. Look how cool I am. I'm just gonna hang out here. Well, we need to give the smaller girl a name. I feel bad that she's got no name and the other two have names. Well, what do you want to name her? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I have too many animals without names. It's too complicated mm. for me. And oh, you can see, watch him get back into his cave where sometimes get we can back, find him. Get back. I just love that get all the action fish are like, there's still people here. Down. Okay, we're losing him in his cave. Goodbye. All right. Yeah, but there are six archer fish in here, I promise. There are archer fish. All right, well, do we have anything else we want to add to our lively live feed today? Well, I just think that you can have a lot of relaxation. That's one of the cool things is with mud skippers and why I really wanted to get them here is because they help tell a really cool story, but they're also just relaxing really and cool. a really just fun, stare. cool thing it's, to yeah, stare it's at. It's amazing what just watching these animals does for you as far as <laughs> now we just need the making world to you feel better. So we can get some more. Yeah, that's what the entire world needs to do. I think we've solved the world's problems. They just need to come here and watch the mud skippers <laughs> for a good hour or two. What do you think, guys? You think that's the solution? <laughs> Get your blood pressure down, relax. What really sucks about these guys is, though, you have to get them from the wild. They do not make mate. There's not they a. They don't, don't mate, mate in captivity in very captivity. well. I was going to say they don't make babies. They don't make babies. Uh, that's how the mud skippers do. <laughs> yeah, they don't make babies in captivity. All right. Unless we've got any other amazing facts we want to share. Nope. I think we will say goodbye for this morning. And we will be back tomorrow morning with something else new and exciting. Or, or maybe not so new. Or mellow and relaxing. Or mellow and relaxing. It just well, depends on how crazy a day, of a day we have today. It's supposed to be really nice tomorrow, guys. Ooh, should we do like something interesting tomorrow? We should bathe the tortoises. We can bathe the tortoises Ooh. tomorrow. How do people feel about that? They need it. Well, I'm okay with that. Cool. So maybe we'll come back with that. Yes. All right, guys. Like uh, um, always, we would, yeah. yes. Yeah. Like and share when possible. And just as a note, we'll keep reminding you now that um, we will not be opening this week. With Sigh. It may be sometime in the week of June 1st, but it really depends on how we all deal with the pandemic that we're in whether we all stay safe and, and uh, keep our numbers of, of infections down. And if we can keep things very calm, then perhaps the governor will relax things so that people can get back out and visit. So it's really up to us. Everybody stay safe, stay healthy, and we can get through this and get back to a time when we can come visit again. Um, but until then, come keep enjoying us. And if you get a chance, because we, like every other business, has been hurting because we can't be open, period. Some businesses are at least starting to get back open, which I am thankful for, but we're not. So if you feel it in your heart, you could get to go to our website. And on our website, we have a donation page because we've got a lot of people that aren't working and animals that still need care. Um, Lots of food. Lots of food. <laughs> Things are starting to feel a little tight, so. So, um, we'd appreciate anything that you could could help with if you want to donate. But other than that, mm -hmm. just. Uh, we also have an online gift store that would help us as well. Have an online gift like store. Make a purchase from our gift store. We have many items online that you, that people can purchase, and we would love it if some of the people from out of our area would purchase a shirt or something and display proudly that you are a part of the Sternberg Museum of Natural History family. Yes. And if things get stressful, you can always re-watch our relaxing video of the mud skippers not really skipping. They just hang out. Why are they called mud skippers? They don't really skip. Well, when there's food. When there's food, they skip. 
they go crazy. It's kind of like. Well, maybe one of these times when you're actually feeding them, I'll come back yes. and we can watch them actually skip. I didn't know you'd be here today. I'm sorry. Well, I'm not usually here on Mondays. Uh, so. I didn't know you were going to be here. Yeah. Otherwise, I would have come and bugged you or right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, goodbye, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed our live feed. We will be back tomorrow. Have a great day. Stay healthy. Stay happy. We'll talk to you soon.